Welcome to Hales Own College's first podcast for applicants looking to study with us in September. I'm Jo Williams and I'm Deputy Principal um, and it's probably fairly apparent that this is my first podcast too. I'll be your host for today and I'm here with Julia Edmonds who's Head of Partnerships um, and she'll be putting some questions to me that have come from you. We've got a number of podcasts coming up over the next month um, and this is our first so please be charitable and more details can be found on our website. Each one of those will, ca will capture a different stage of your learner journey so please take a look when you can at the ones that interest you. Um, we've got applicants across the board from A-level, B-tech, vocational, higher education, GCSE and I'm hoping that tonight we'll be able to answer all the questions that you've submitted. If you think of other questions afterwards um, or over the next few days, weeks, months, we have got a range of ways that you can get in touch with us through submit a question on our website, emailing hub at halesowen.ac.uk, emailing admissions at halesowen.ac.uk or emailing info at halesowen.ac.uk or you can always use Facebook Messenger. So hopefully there'll be some way that you can get your question across and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. So today what I'm hoping to cover is first of all what we're doing in the light of COVID-19 and how we're supporting our current students, um, how the A-levels and GCSEs are going to be calculated and, and don't worry really, um, I'll tell you how we're doing that but we're really going to do that to make sure that we look after everybody and we do recognise what an anxious time it is for everyone who should have been doing exams and assessments this summer. Um, we'll also go through how to apply at Hales Owen College in case you haven't already and also what you can do if you've already applied to us in September and either have questions or want to get going on some study in between times and once I've gone through that I'll start to uh, address the questions directly that you put to us. So let's begin. Um, how we're supporting our students at the moment as you'll all be aware, it's a really strange time. So for starters, we spend a lot of our time talking to screens uh, rather than to proper people. And we've all had to get used to really different ways of working and indeed just being at home with our families all the time. For our students, they've been learning online now for nearly six weeks. And that can be through Moodle, um, Teams calls and a whole range of things, probably like much like you've been doing from home too. And uh, students have really engaged with that. Some things have worked better than others and they probably like some things better than others. What we are making sure is that we're supporting our students and making sure they can continue learning and addressing new things. And I think we've all learned quite a lot about ourselves and about the things that we like doing online. And some people have really started to push forward for that, which is great. We've had some really nice feedback from students um, and maths A-level students have really enjoyed some of the Teams calls and things that the maths department have been doing. Um, podcasts in history have gone down really well and um, I think some of our staff have found a whole new social media presence that maybe they didn't know they'd got and again we've highlighted some of this on our social media channels but we've had hair and beauty students sharing their designs from home and their makeup with some really fantastic results so we've been really pleased it's not ideal we'd all rather see people have the freedom to be outside but at least we've kept in touch and if students have had a wobble or they wanted somebody to have a moan at maybe um, or just 10 minutes to talk to somebody else rather than family, there have been people on hand to do that, which I think is really important and probably a lot of you will appreciate too. Students have been submitting work electronically and again that's gone really well and we've been able to give feedback. So as far as possible, if there is a normal, it's been business as usual but on a different platform. Um, we've also tried to keep in contact with students who've already applied to us and that could well be some of you that are watching this now and I suppose the key message and the message I'll probably keep going back to is please don't worry uh, it must be hard at home suddenly thinking I've got these exams and they've told me if I get five grade fours or grade fives then I get into college and suddenly you're not allowed to go for those grade fours and fives don't worry about it we know the process that you're going through we know that your exams have been suspended and we will make sure we don't disadvantage you any more than I know the schools are supporting you to make sure you get predicted the grades you deserved and you're working towards. So at enrolment, however that may look, and again, we'll talk about that in a little while, we'll make sure that you can continue your education, 
um, get back on board and do the course that will allow you to succeed and get to where you want to go. So even though you're the first person or the, the first group of students ever to have this experience, we will make sure you still get to where you want to go eventually. We were planning to have several events in the summer. As you know, I think some of the questions we'll talk about InfoFest. And again, that will depend very much on what the government are saying. So I can make some guesses today, but we really don't know what that'll look like. What we can guarantee is we're going to keep in touch with you. We'll try and give you a flavour of what's going on as we go along and make it as normal and as reassuring as possible. So we will keep in touch with you. Um, and we've obviously given you a range of ways you can keep in touch with us. And don't worry about bombarding us with questions. If you're sitting at home worrying, come back to us because some of us have got time to do that and we're missing human contact too. So to answer those questions, we'd much rather do that. Um, so close to the time we'll think about enrolment and induction and those kind of things. We are already planning, but if you can imagine, we've got an option A, B and C, depending on what the government say. So we'll say as much about that as and when we can. And again, I'll talk to you a little bit later about if you're sitting at home, and school have said, right, we're predicting your grades now. They'll be giving you some things to do. But you might be itching to get on with something to do with health and social care or A-level sociology. And hopefully we can talk to you about what you can do to prepare and what kind of things you can get engaged in while you're at home. Um, going on to the second part of this about how GCSEs and A-levels are being calculated this year, you'll be aware that because the exams have been cancelled, because they've had to be cancelled, your school is going to be asked to send information to the exam boards about what grade they think you would have got if you'd sat that exam in the summer. And again, some of you will know that because schools have been keeping in touch all the way through, you're working to a grade five, six, seven, um, whichever grade you're working towards. So. Your school or college will think about the grade they believe you would most likely have got if teaching, learning and exams had happened as planned. And within each subject, they'll then put you in the order. This person would have got a really high grade six. This person would have got borderline five and six. And they will rank each of you. And they'll consider a range of things in that. So it'll be about your classwork, your homework, results in assignments, assessments, mock exams, any coursework and your general progress through the course. And some of you will be sitting there now thinking, oh, but I would have done better in an exam. Again, please don't worry about that because we'll also take that rounded view. And in the first couple of weeks, you'll get the chance to attempt some work to make sure you're working at the level we think you are. Um, and we know that for some people, they'll feel cheated out doing those exams, but we will make sure at enrolment that we look at everything, talk to you, talk to your parents and schools if necessary to make sure we put you on the right program to allow you to succeed. Um, and we can definitely do that. So please don't worry and don't sit at home worrying about that. The next thing to talk about is to how to apply to study at Hale Zone College. So if you haven't already applied for one of our courses in September, that's not a problem. You'll be aware every year that some people apply earlier or later than others. And you can apply for a place by visiting the website. So there's an apply button, a big pink button on the home page. And again, if you have any problems, because I think we've all probably encountered some problems with our computers, our Wi-Fi, please let us know through the whole range of other ways you can get in touch with us. And if you want information about courses, bursary application processing, bus information, or indeed anything that doesn't fit into that, you can contact our student hub via admissions at halesowen.ac.uk. And those people are used to having questions about a whole range of things. And if they can't answer it, they know someone who can and they can get that answer for you. If you want careers advice and guidance, impartial information, our careers team have got gold standard careers and they really are committed to helping you get on the right path. And they're very good at thinking about different avenues. If you sat at home and had a careers crisis, as I'm sure some of us have, then maybe you want to talk to somebody about what you really want to do now. And again, you can email them on careers at halesowen.ac.uk. We've also got additional support avenues, um, aspire to HE, aim higher, things that you might have heard of at school. And if you do fall into those areas for support, we've got two people there, Carell Phillips and Sarah Froggart. And again, we'd be able to put you in touch with those and they can also talk about other support, other events and things. If you have already applied to, for, to study with us in September, that's great. Um, and so hopefully you've had numerous communications from us and we'll continue to get those. 
So don't worry about your college place. If you are thinking, well, I put in an application, I'm sure I haven't had an email back. Contact us through one of those avenues and we'll, we'll follow it up for you. Um, so there really is nothing, well, I say nothing that we can't sort. Unfortunately, we can't sort COVID-19. But again, within your applications for the college, we can hopefully sort all those things for you and secure you the place that you want. And again, we can work with you at enrolment. We can talk to you now to make sure you're on the right course and the thing that will motivate you to get through these next few months um, and get onto the career that you want to get onto. So if you've already applied to study with us in September and you've already been accepted for a course, we are working on providing preparatory work for you to prepare for college life in September. And some people, I think, with some time at home, have been motivated to do some things that maybe you wouldn't have had time to do if you were at school. And we'll publish this on our website under the school leavers um, banner. So if you scroll across the banners, you'll see that option. And then there's an FAQ which says, what can I do to prepare for college life? And we're putting work on there weekly as teams build up some material for you to do, which will be really useful. And again, there should be reading lists on there and various things to do. And if you don't see the subject that you want, again, give us a call, sorry, give us an email on one of those uh, emails that we've provided and we can let you know when the work's going up or chase something up for you if there's something that's not quite right for you there. So now it's on to your questions, um, which I'm hopefully going to know all the answers to, um, unlike Mastermind. Okay, um, thank you very much to all of the applicants that have sent through their questions. We've received many and now I'm going to present them to the Deputy Principal so that she can answer. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to get in contact with us. Um, so the first ones are around applications and the welcome day that was arranged. Um, so the first one is, I can't find the apply page, where is it? So the, uh, the apply button is the pink button on the front page of the website. And again, if anybody does struggle with that, please contact us and we'll be able to help you apply. Okay. Uh, another one, I want to change my course, how do I do this? If you contact admissions with the admissions email that we've given out, they'll be able to either change it immediately, but if you want to chat to somebody about that, again, we should be able to arrange for somebody to talk you through why you want to change, what you want to change to. And again, we anticipate a lot of people will do that just because you sit thinking, you, it, it, it's natural to change, isn't it? And it's also quite hard sometimes to decide what you want to do. So again, there's no problem with contacting us. We can change your course for you as long as you've got those entry requirements and we'll talk you through all the different options. So it would be to contact admissions in the first instance. Okay. Are we still going to have a welcome day in July? Well, we'd like to think so. Um, what kind of a welcome day that will be in July will really depend on what the government say. So if we're unable to have a, a welcome day that's actually with you physically there, we'll be doing something online. And again, we're working on that at the moment so that there'll be various ways that you can do that welcome day and hopefully still do some taster sessions, even if they are virtual. So we'll keep you posted on all those options. We'll definitely keep in touch with you regularly anyway. And it will be either a face-to-face -face or a virtual welcome day, but there will be something. Okay, fabulous. Uh, one was welcome day, the other was, is there going to be an open day to see the college? Again, that will depend on whether we're allowed to have an open day, um, but we are currently working. We've done over the past term some things with um, people walking around the college, going into buildings and trying to build up our virtual open day as well for people who can't make it. So in the short term, we'll be working on some of those videos that can give you a taste of what the college is like, at least through a virtual scenario. And again, as soon as we're allowed to open in any way, then we will also look at putting some, well, some open days on for people. But that really is dependent on what the government guidelines are. Okay. Um, the coach service doesn't come to my area. Can the college still help me? We can still help you. Uh, last year, we actually changed some coach routes on the basis of where people applied from. So I think in the first instance, if you wanted to contact admissions or the student hub and tell them where you live and we could look at if there is a coach close, could we tweak a route for you um, or look at other travel options. So certainly in the first instance, I would try and talk to someone, drop an email and somebody will then contact you uh, because we are able to be quite flexible and we're flexible every year with our coach routes. 
I'd been told by, uh, I've been told my place at Hales Owen College has been secured, but I haven't been told what course I'm doing. Will it be my first choice? It will be your first choice um, at this stage. But again, if you want to confirm that, drop us an email and we'll confirm it for you. And if you want to change that, drop us an email. And again, we can still change that. But certainly if you're sitting there wondering what it is, drop us an email and, and let us get back to you. Can I do ESOL alongside another course, such as a beautician's course? It is possible to do two courses together if they're part-time courses. Uh, what we want to do in the first instance is make sure the ESOL course and your level of English is suitable to be able to do the beautician's course. Otherwise, we might suggest do ESOL for the first term, get your language skills to where they need to be, and then jump onto a beauty course. So we'd need to look at the individual circumstances, but certainly practically, it is possible to do the two together. Okay. What adult courses do you have? We do a range of adult courses. And again, I would encourage you to look on the website for the various lists, but just off the top of my head, we've got an access to higher education course where a lot of adults choose to change careers and we've got their access to midwifery, health, social work, um, social science, business and law, science. So there's a range of access courses. We also do a range of counselling courses, supporting teaching and learning for teaching assistants, um, adult IT courses. We've got a range of higher education courses, HNCs and HNDs and some, some foundation degrees. So there are a range of adult courses available. That wasn't an exhaustive list, obviously, my memory's not that good, but it is all on the website. And again, if you've got a specific interest around an area, um, we do accounting courses, so that's another one that's just come to mind, then please drop us an email and we can obviously tell you what we do in that area. Okay, where do I find out about course fees? So there is information on the website about some course fees, but I think if you want to work it through in terms of the way that payments can be taken and whether they can be phased, then what would be best to do is again put an email into admissions and they can confirm the fees as we've got them and also the ways that you can pay that. I'm starting a higher education course with the college in September. How do I get my student loan and can someone from the college help me do this? The answer is yes to can somebody help you. Again, if you go through to admissions, there are people there who would be able to help and put you in touch with somebody who could take you through how to apply for the student loan and what information you'll need. And then the last one from the applications and welcome day section is, um, does bullying occur at Hales Own College? And if so, how do you manage that? Inevitably, bullying does occur from time to time. Um, and it'd be silly for me to deny that. That's human nature, I guess, sadly. Um, we've got a range of ways of dealing with it. First of all, we do deal with it. But sometimes students ask us not to approach the person that's bullying them. So we've got some more subtle ways, changing groups. Um, we can usually arrange timetables so people aren't in on the same day or they're not on the same campus. Uh, if, people, if we need to take a harder line because the bullying doesn't stop, then we do do that. We have got a code and we've got a zero to tolerance to bullying. Um, but we work with whoever's being bullied to solve that and as I say wouldn't shy away from that and the, there are usually a range of ways we can do it. Okay so moving on to the next set of questions which are all around entry requirements, offers and interviews. The first one we have is how will I find out if I've been offered a place or not? So you should have had emails and letters through to tell you that you've been offered a place if you've been expecting that and haven't had it, my advice would be to drop an email to admissions and we'll chase that up in case there's an error in an email address or the line of an address, because that does happen from time to time. Okay. How will I still have, uh, sorry, will I still have my college interview? Some of you may still have an interview and definitely if you want that, because you want some time to discuss that with an advisor, then those will definitely come through. And I believe admissions at the moment are working on that to put those interviews in place. Will the college be more lenient as we haven't taken its sums and it's not our true result? Completely. Um, I think we're all, we're all at a stage where we don't really know what's going to happen and that's going to be really difficult. And so we're aware that we are going to need to be more lenient, um, probably talk to you in more depth about what's gone on and, and see where it goes. And I, I think we've got a responsibility as well to realise that this has never happened to a, a cohort of students before. And 
it could be an opportunity because okay you haven't taken exams but you've you've learned new ways to learn online ways and things and that's certainly the way we will see it but we won't be looking to penalize anyone because we know this is nobody's choice okay if we don't meet the grades for the course will you push us into another course we won't push you into another course no i mean if you really don't meet the grades for the course and we think that there's there's a likelihood that you wouldn't pass or succeed on a higher level course we would encourage you to do a level two maybe before a level three but i hope it wouldn't be a push uh, again if parents want to be involved they'd be encouraged to be involved and we're, we're looking at the moment about sort of doing trials in subjects as well so you know if you really think you should be on a level three but your grades suggest that you won't be it may be we'll give you some level two and level three work and, and look at the levels from there because but also give you a little bit of time to settle back in because it sounds silly doesn't it but if you've been online a lot do you forget to write almost or do you forget some of the skills that you've got so we will bear that in mind as well but certainly I would hope we wouldn't push anyone into a course and that there will be a choice for what you want to do and it will make sense to both of us. If I fail my grades from school can I still do my course with you? Yes you can um, it may not be your first choice course if the grades really aren't what we think they should be um, but again through that process, hopefully we'd find the right one for you. If I've lost my GCSE certificates, will I still be able to start my course? Yes, you will. Um, we can probably either source the grades from your school or we can work with you to get new copies of your certificates. Can I resit my GCSEs if I don't get the grades to join the college course? Um, yes, you can. So English and maths, obviously, we'd be looking at if you didn't get a grade for anyway, because that, that, that's based on government guidance. But we have actually introduced a course this year called Access to A-Level. And there will there be the opportunity to resit or do some new GCSEs for people who are sort of borderline between the grades to do A-Levels and maybe the grades to do vocational courses or other things. Um, we'd actually put this programme in way before any of this happened because students had reflected that sometimes the subjects they do at school aren't the ones they wanted to do, but had they been given an opportunity to do others. Um, we will put some publicity out about that soon, but some of the GCSEs that we're looking at there would include possibly psychology and sociology, so things you may not have done at school, and we can do those in a year, a GCSE programme, so that may be an opportunity for some people um, who maybe don't get the grades they quite expected or want that year to, to resit GCSEs. Okay. If we aren't happy with our GCSE results, is it possible to be able to take them next summer? If you did that programme, it would be. Um, and I think there needs to be a discussion about that, doesn't there? Because it may be you'll want to retake one. And, that, and the awarding bodies at the moment are saying there will be resit opportunities. But I think you need to think about, do you need to resit them? Uh, is that the best thing for you to do or is it best to put that behind you now and, and move on to the next stage because there's always going to be the understanding that obviously you didn't ever get the opportunity to do your GCSE grades so I think that discussion would be very much an individual one about why you want to do it how important is it and is it the best thing for you I changed my mind about what I want to do further in life how can I change my course uh, just contact the admissions team uh, so we, we anticipate a number of people will change their minds. Um, I think we all do it quite often. So, yeah, if you contact admissions and they'll be able to give you advice about what you can do instead, if you already know, then it should be a simple case of just transferring your course offer. Okay. The last one with regards to entry requirements, offers and interviews is uh, what essential reading books can I buy now in readiness for 2020 entry? So if you go onto the section on the website that says school leavers, there will be work for you to do and reading lists from subjects. If you can't find the reading list for a subject you want to do some extra reading on that you, you want to come and study with us next year, if you drop us an email, we can get something, some suggestions to you. And again, if you're looking at doing some of the English subjects, but it's worth bearing in mind that Audible at the moment have got a number of books free on there that might be useful. And we'll be able to suggest some free books as well as ones you need to buy. Okay, uh, the next set of questions are around enrolment. We had a number of queries. The first one was, what month is enrolment going to happen? It'll be August through to September. So we will wait till you get your GCSE results, which is still going to be on the day you're expecting to get your GCSE results, which is the 20th of August. Mm -hmm. um, so from then on, 
that's when we will start enrolment and again there'll be more details coming through about that and we'll communicate give you times dates or exact instructions about what to do and what will enrolment look like good question uh, again scenario a and b enrolment could be a socially distanced version of what we usually do for enrolment it could be some online enrolment some in college enrolment we really are waiting for government guidance and again we've got our plan a's and b's how we can do a socially distanced version how we can do some things online and we'll make sure as soon as we know exactly the way things are going you will also know and how will i know when i'm enrolled so you'll get you'll get a letter confirming your enrolment if you come into the college to do it we give you that letter there and then and your college card your identification card if we're doing them online then obviously you get an online confirmation and we would physically hand over the card at some other point so we've got some ideas about how it will work you will definitely know but that will really depend on how we have to do enrolment how many students study at Hales Owen College so in terms of full-time 16 to 18 students this year we've got roughly 3,500 students um, you don't ever see all of those students because they come in on different days and times so it will almost definitely seem busier than school although in a socially distanced model who knows um, but you don't see all of those students at one time okay when is the first day of term the first day of teaching when we planned before this was the first of september so the first official day of teaching was the first of september and again if any of these questions are based around holidays or holidays people hope to take if holidays have been booked we obviously do work around those so please don't worry about that now and the last question around enrolment is, can we change our options after we've enrolled? Yes. Um, again, we don't encourage people to change, go in for one lesson for one day and think, oh, I'm not, not sure about this, I'll change. But what we would do over the first week or two is keep talking to you, how's it going? Is it the right subject? And if it isn't, there is an opportunity to change because again, it's a big decision to make, isn't it? From doing GCSEs to suddenly going into a course that you maybe haven't done before. Um, and suddenly decide that it's not quite what you thought it was. So there is an opportunity to change and that would always be done in conjunction with parents, the student and your personal coach or your tutors. Uh, we have had a number of questions around the first day of college. Uh, the first one is, is there going to be a social distancing when we all go back to college after quarantine? I think that's almost inevitable and what that will look like again we're taking advice at the moment um, Germany have just started back some of their students and I believe they've got 15 per class at the moment and a two meter distancing between the students so it could be we'll have smaller classes it could be we'll have one-way systems in corridors for a while so you go in one door and out the other um, we've been thinking about whether it's better for the teachers to move between classes rather than the students um, again, these are all really early thoughts because we're just looking at what people are doing, but we are planning and again, that will be very clear, but we will only do what is safe for students and we will definitely follow any government guidance to make sure we keep our staff and students safe. Um, sort of leads in from that question, but one was, uh, what changes will be in place for September? I suspect there's going to be a lot of changes and again, I can't tell you specifically what those will be. We've been looking at plastic screens for where we will need those. Again, one way in buildings, um, probably more staff around to make sure that's enforced. Uh, I suspect our eating areas will be very different because there will be need to be more space there. We talked this morning about the coaches and about whether the coaches, it may be one person to a double seat. And again, they're talking about putting plastic screens up between the different layers of seating for safety. It, it, it is all talk at the moment because we don't have any guidance but if I can just reassure people that we are thinking now there's plenty of ways to do things and we will always make sure we do the safe thing for students and staff. Who is going to show me around college? There's always loads of people on the first few days to show you where to go. The signage is reasonably good too. Um, students help each other out and can tell people where buildings are but there will be plenty of people to show you around and again personal coaches tend to take their tutor groups around we can still do that in a socially distanced way so we would make sure you knew exactly where to go okay and the last one around the first few days is what is the dress code um dress code is obviously more laid back than school and there's not a uniform 
it needs to be sensible. And again, if you're doing sport, it would be expected that when you're doing physical activity, you're dressed appropriately. There's uniforms in hair and beauty. Um, other than that, the dress code is very much casual, um, but sensible, obviously. Okay. And in the last section of questions we've had are around specific uh, course related queries um, and the first one is are you still running animal care and vet nursing apprenticeships? We won't be running the vet nursing apprenticeships next year um, we had some staff illness in the area and as yet haven't managed to get another vet nursing teacher so we've made the decision to actually delay that course possibly for at least 12 months um, to make sure that we can do it properly so there won't be any vet nursing apprenticeships offered if anybody wants advice about where to go we are working closely with some other local colleges that do run it okay in light of coronavirus what will happen with the work placements for apprenticeships in september um, some apprenticeships are still going and um, in, in some areas and again those will all have to adapt to whatever government guidelines happen there is a feeling nationally that there may be less apprenticeships available in september and so what we're looking at at the moment is if we can do some kind of getting ready for apprenticeship type courses where as soon as vacancies come in people who are interested and in on these courses we'd be able to put them forward for interview and source apprenticeships as quickly as we can okay if I can't get a guaranteed placement for my apprenticeship due to coronavirus, will the college still offer me a place? Yes, we will. And as I say, we're actually working on ways to do that to make sure that you get the apprenticeship as soon as you can, but that you've got something to do in between times that will be useful and prepare you well for that. What are the entry requirements for the HNC business? The entry requirements generally are a level three qualification, um, but that's not always the case if you've been in business for 20 years and got various other business qualifications. So I, I think really it is about actually giving the college a ring, finding out what you've done before, what your prior experience is, and then we will be able to recommend based on that. What am I going to do for public services? Public services course offers a, a range of opportunities. So there are practical units on that where you'd be going on um, hikes and other energetic activities, outdoor activities. Um, there's coursework also looking at the whole range of emergency and military services that you might be going into. There's units on there touching on legal things for those people interested in policing. So there are a range of things on a public services course, both practical and theoretical. And again, if you wanted some more specific advice or a, a more specific lowdown on the subject, if you contact admissions, I'm sure somebody from the public services department could get in contact and give you a list of units and some details. Okay. And uh, do you offer English and maths? We do offer English and maths. We offer GCSE and A-level English and maths, but also functional skills um, right from entry level through to level two. So wherever you're coming into that, um, in terms of your English and maths abilities, we will be able to offer something for you. What equipment do I need for level three theatrical makeup and how much is it? So this was quite a technical one. And um, when these questions came through, I did look this one up. So this isn't off the top of my head. Um, the, the equipment you need is there's a kit of the various makeup for £110, plus what they call a grimace kit. Um, which I guess is more specialist material, and that's £244. So the total would be £354.89, which sounds, which it is a lot of money, but please bear in mind we do have a learner support fund and we would go through with your various payment options for that. And where can I buy the beauty therapy kit for September? The beauty therapy kit for September, you will be sent all the details of that when you're enrolled on the course. Um, and they actually give you the link then to buy whatever you need to buy. Um, if I want to do a chefing course, do I need to start at level one? Not necessarily, no. Um, many people go into the chefing course at level two, the professional cookery. Uh, if you haven't got the grades for that though, or if you're not confident to go in at level two, there is a level one course to prepare. Okay. Uh, the next one is, what is the timetable for the debt part-time? So the timetable would be one day per week plus time that you'd need to allocate to do your teaching practice alongside that. We haven't got the exact day for that programme yet, but as soon as we have, we'll make sure that's publicised and we can let you know individually. Okay. 
And the last question, um, I was wondering, I was considering HND business as I have a level three in business too, but would like to do music, but don't have a music qualification. Um, what are the entry requirements? So the entry requirements for music, if you've got a level three qualification, you could certainly get onto a music qualification as long as you've got some kind of musical ability. So we would recommend that you do an audition for that. Um, so again, if you got in touch and said that's what you wanted to study, we'd arrange for you to have an audition with a member of the music staff and they would be able to advise you accordingly then as to level and what course. Fantastic. And those are all the questions that were covered in the applicant offer that went out. So I will leave you to summary and close. And hopefully we've managed to answer them to your satisfaction. If we haven't, please get back to us because we can obviously elaborate more one to one. Um, as I said earlier, if you have got any further questions, you can do the submit a question on the website. We've got three emails, either hub at hailzone.ac.uk, admissions at hailzone.ac.uk or info at hailzone.ac.uk or you can contact us via Facebook Messenger. We will post regularly on the website, so if you haven't already, please take a look and we'll be putting updates as often as we can on there just to give you an idea of where we're at at various points of our operation. Um, we've also got social media platforms including Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and if you don't already please do follow us, keep up to date with information, events and see some of the fantastic work our students are doing at the moment. Um, other than that it's really just for me to say thank you for listening to us, please stay safe, um, please don't get anxious, ask us any questions you want to do and we'll all really look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you.